If you can read that, it says 4 of 2002. 2002 Honda CRV rear disc brakes. Rear disc brakes. We've got a 17 millimeter slide right here. You want to make sure they're loose. They're pretty free and loose. Might put a little more lubricant on there. Uh, we had five 19 millimeter lug nuts. You want to break those loose on the ground and then you can jack up the vehicle and make sure you do whatever safety things you need to do. Two jacks underneath there, a, a block of wood, a couple tires. Make sure it doesn't fall down. Probably won't fall down on you, but trying to get a car off the ground once it's fallen can be a pain. Got the tire off. Caliper on here, like I said. And we got uh, 12 millimeter bolts on the outside here. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. And you probably might have to hold this 17 millimeter. Tools I've used. Got a ratchet wrench here and 17 millimeter. Got the two bolts off. And if you just grab this and pull it with your hand and pull forward, you can collapse the piston just a little bit and it'll make it slide off easier. See the hose is stuck in there. So you might have to pull a little bit, but you can get it off like so. Again, just checking these. And then uh, this rotor is pretty smooth for the do-it-yourself or you could certainly consider just throwing the pads on then at this time and uh, putting it back together, pretty simple. Uh, in the field though at the shop, we replaced the pads and the rotors. We'll be taking this apart. So we have two 14 millimeter bolts in the back. One there, one there, and we'll be taking this uh, bracket off. Then we get the rotor off. It's got two Phillips screws. They can be pretty difficult to get off just by turning by hand. We have an impact driver. This will put it in here like this. Then we take a hammer and bang on the end of it, and it usually loosens up the Phillips screws. You can also use a hammer and a chisel and try and turn it. Again, everything's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. We'll see that in action. That was actually pretty easy. Again, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And we'll I'll put a little lubricant on these pins probably. If these seem too gunky. Hey, there's a little smoke there. So these are pretty clean. I don't really feel any to uh, clean them up because they look pretty darn clean. You were so under control. C-clamp is one of the devices you can use to collapse the pistons in your caliper. Simple as that. So here's the little brake shoes for the emergency brake. They seem to be in decent shape. If your emergency brake doesn't seem to grab very well, there's a small star adjuster. You can give it a couple turns right here. And uh, probably adjust them. Got the rotor off. Put the new rotor on. So if you do replace your brake drums or brake rotors, uh, out of the box, 
usually wrapped in plastic, not always, but they also do come with a film on them to protect them from rusting, so you do want to clean that off or it can gum up your brake pads or shoes, as the case may be. So we have our parts washer here. We've been cleaning it. Then we want to, uh, with the final step we do is uh, rinse it with some uh, brake clean. You have your garden hose. You can probably uh, rinse it off with your garden hose. Of course, that's water. It might make it rust, but we're just gonna clean this off with our brake clean and then let it dry and then we can mount it onto our car without worrying about that material gumming up our shoes or pads. This is the new drum, but most of the time when you're taking off the old drum, it'll just slide off. Sometimes it won't. There are these two holes. Put a metric, two metric bolts in there. Eight millimeter, I think it is by 1.25 thread pitch. Put those in there. You can put two uh, bolts in there, they're metric again, and then you can mm -hmm. screw these in, it's gonna force the rotor off. So that's how you can get them off once those uh, Phillips screws are out. Don't forget to take the Phillips screws out or it won't work. We've also got some hardware we can replace on our bracketry and also for the caliper. New pads. We'll go ahead and clean the uh, brake caliper piston a little bit and then we'll collapse it. And just like that, it's collapsed. We have new ones of these, so we're gonna go ahead and, with a screwdriver, we're gonna slide this forward towards the piston as much as possible, and then slide it out the back. That's the plan. Just like that. Basically have the new ones installed. We're just gonna remount the caliper. Got the 14 millimeter bolts started by hand. Brake pad.
and install our two 12 millimeter bolts. I can always start them by hand. Might have to bounce a little bit to get the uh, bolts to line up. Got that new piece in there, spring loaded a little bit. There we go, finished product. 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, 17 millimeter. New rotor and brake pads. Uh, double check your brake fluid level in the car. I'll show you that. And uh, wheels are probably about 80 foot pounds of torque on the lug nuts. Do it in a star pattern. Crisscross, like so when you put the wheel on, uh, pump up the brakes with the brake pedal a few times before you drive it, because you can uh, put it in drive and go somewhere and then you find out your brake pedal goes to the floor because you haven't moved the fluid through the system to take up the space when you collapsed the brake piston on your brakes. So pump up the brakes before you drive anywhere or anybody. All right, for the brakes, as we talked about, I want to pump the brakes a few times. <clears throat> then we can check the fluid level and uh, make sure that whoever gets in the car, when they drive away, they'll have brakes. All right, we can check the brake fluid now. Here's the brake fluid. Take it off. Some instructions on the top for opening and closing. This usually comes out with the cap, I believe, but our fluid is uh, definitely just a little bit over the max. So I'd use a clean rag of some kind, maybe soak a little bit up and uh, take it out. And otherwise the max lines are right there. So then you put the cap back on. So we're getting these screws out. If you don't have a special tool and you're using a Phillips and it's not working, Another thing to do is just try and put this a screwdriver in there and then use a hammer and tap on it while you're turning it, which is left to loosen. Another thing you can do is a hammer and a chisel. Just try and hit it on the outside edge, of course, and uh, hit it that way. And uh, hopefully that works for you if you don't have the right tools. I think there should be a link to Amazon if you do choose to get the right tools or whatever tools or parts you need. It really would help speed things along for you.